Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. After yesterday doing the top 5 most anticipated things in the updates, I thought I would do the disappointing things out of the updates, because obviously when it comes to updates, they bring the good and the bad. I would say that this update brings way more good than it does bad. Uh, the update itself is actually one that I'm most hyped for in the last few years. There's a lot of really cool stuff in it, and also the main thing is obviously the economy changes and some of the other changes coming in with it. A lot of kind of middle stuff is being changed, um, you know, the core of the game instead of just individual vehicles, which is much more interesting than uh, what we've seen in the past. Anyway, let's get into it. The first one is the map changes. Some of them really do well, and others just completely miss the mark. Japan, for a setting, has just not really changed that much, has not changed many of the power positions, has changed some of the positions that were abused by a very small amount of vehicles, but that's really about it. The positive ones, I'd say, are Corellia. Uh, the additions to Corellia uh, were very nice. The additions to Fields of Poland were nice, but also they just didn't get rid of the two positions that are super strong when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the map itself. An American desert is very much up in the air. Um, and most of the map changes, if you don't like that, you know, close quarter combat style, you're not really going to do too well in. All of these uh, maps now are designed to more pigeonhole people into certain playstyles, which I'm sure many will enjoy, especially since, you know, they buffed heavy tanks quite aggressively. It's very obvious what's going on here. They're trying to take away certain elements of mobility and flanking, uh, because that's where, you know, most people generally spawn camp from or get an advantage through light tank play or any of that stuff and trying to make it a bit more route one, if you know what I mean. So if you like that type of play style, this is really going to benefit you. But if you don't and you prefer a varied play style, especially like a person like me, who what I do um, is I, you know, move around the place and play a bunch of different vehicles. So when I'm playing the heavy tanks, yeah, it's going to feel great. But when I'm playing the lights or when I'm playing the mediums or the SVGs or the SPAAs or anything like that, it's kind of going to suck. Also, a lot of these map changes, as I said, they're going to pigeonhole people into certain routes, and what that means is CAS is going to become very much more problematic on a lot of these maps, because there's going to be less places to go, less places to fan out in order to control the map. Now we have some negatives when it comes to the changing of the tech trees. The vast majority of them are very positive, uh, but also at the same time there are a few negatives. The first one is there's many vehicles which are getting folded or getting pushed behind vehicles that they weren't previously. For example, the Glorious uh, in the Naval Tech Tree for Britain is getting pushed behind two separate folders. So if you don't have those vehicles uh, researched, in including the HMS London, you're not going to be able to get to the Glorious. So might be worth focusing on that right now if you want to get a vehicle like that. That's why I said it's worth having a look at the researchable tech trees which are coming in because there's going to be issues uh, when uh, it comes to grinding certain vehicles. So if you're very single vehicle focused, it's going to be a bit of a problem, uh, but you'll eventually get the vehicle. It just may take a little bit longer than before. The other one is the grounding of certain vehicles, the Votors and the F-84Fs. The F-84Fs, the Votors, and even stuff like the Saab 105s and the SK-60Bs are vehicles which are used predominantly um, at the start of battles for base bombing. The Saab 105 is a little bit obviously up in the air, it's a very good S priority fighter, same with the SK-60, but the two that are getting massively affected in these changes are the Votors and the F-84Fs. Both of them are going up in rank, which means that they no longer get air spawns, and the only reason they're going up in rank, I know they constantly, you know, if you have a look at when they talked about why they're moving certain vehicles in rank, they talked about, oh, well, minimum BR here and maximum BR here, or it makes more sense here because of its BR. These vehicles are not going up because of their BR. They are literally going up because they are the predominant uh, vehicles that are used to bomb bases. So without these, it's going to shift the meta to other vehicles like B-57s, Canberras, stuff like that, if it's possible to do that, and that's pretty much why. They're just too efficient, and it's funny because, you know, as we'll get into, when it comes to responses on why stuff like this is going up in, in rank, 
uh, there is no uh, there is no clarification on why that's happening because they can't just say because they're too effective because that kind of breaks the whole idea of all of this is based around BR. The F thirty four Fs are eight three I think right now like they're, they're nowhere near the rank uh, of any of the other BR vehicles at that rank, so it is just kind of ridiculous. But yeah, grounding of those vehicles sucks. The Boto used to be absolutely awful uh, because of all of the strike aircraft that were around. It would just get bullied constantly, and now it's going to be back to be bullied again. And that just sucks, because that's quite a lot of vehicles for France, and also Israel, which are just going to be useless again. Then we have two points which kind of go in tandem with this, and it has been the complaining that we've been seeing over the last few weeks, and then also Gajin's overall response to issues in general. Uh, so the complaining has been off the charts for this update. I don't even know why, because when I look at the amount of stuff that's coming, it looks really nice and it looks really fun. So far, the things that, <laughs> that seem to be like annoying people, so Germany's getting a new tank, but it's not an upgrade of a previous tank, so therefore that's bad. They wanted something better. And also the KF-41's going to Hungary instead of Germany right now. And because for years people have been asking for the Puma with spikes, now they just feel annoyed because it's like, well, you could have just added this in for Germany, blah, 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 blah. So those seem to be the two points for Germany. So the fact that they're getting a vehicle, but it's not good enough, and also they're not getting a vehicle, but you know for a fact you're going to get a similar vehicle in the future. And also, once again, the response by one of the Gadget employees was the reason it's not coming to Germany is because it wasn't used in service by Germany, which is a ridiculous response because there's a bunch of German vehicles which um, there's a bunch of German vehicles which are in the German tech tree which weren't used by the German armed forces. So once again, the response to the complaining was absolutely awful and just fired, flamed the fires. And this is something we've seen in the past when it comes to it. Then you had stuff like the T-90S, you know, some British mains getting annoyed that the T-90S is being added to Britain because getting an extra vehicle is a bad thing um, at the end of the day, even though you know that other vehicles are going to be added for Britain as they have been forever, even after the South Africans were added, Britain has consistently got new vehicles in the tech tree and will consistently get vehicles in the future. They even tried to preface these two points, by the way. In the devlog for the KF-41, they said it wasn't coming to the German tech tree, uh, but also said there will be something in the future for them, which is similar. And in the T-90S one, they said the same thing for Britain. Just because they're adding the T-90S Bishma, it's not that they're not working on like stuff for Britain, uh, it's just that they wanted to put this in as an additional squadron vehicle. Uh, then also, you had obviously the Italians complaining about getting more vehicles into their tech tree because they're not Italian, even though, you know, basically this will bring more people to enjoy Italian vehicles, and the Gaijin response to that, I don't even know if they had one, because what are you supposed to say to that? Like, I mean, the, the response is, Italy, hardly anybody played, and also at the same time, um, you know, they were struggling at certain BRs, so the Hungarian tech tree makes sense. Like, they said this, like, a year ago. And then there's also, there was a bunch of French complaining as well about different things, like, just going around the place. There was a ton of complaining this update, and even from, like, Americans, when it was like, okay, the r seventy threes get added, where is our crazy missile? And then they got their crazy missile, and now everybody's complaining about the crazy missile. I honestly think it's not just the fact that it has increased, because just looking at the general stats of everything, the complaining has gone off the charts, and it's because of the fact that Gajin responded to the review stuff. And is that a negative thing? No, not at all. It's actually good that the company did respond to those things, but now it's created a catalyst for every Tom, Dick, and Harry to be able to kind of put out all of their thoughts about everything. And that's fine, you know, it is how it is. The main thing is, though, it's crippling social media platforms. You've seen a massive drop-off when it comes to the War Thunder Reddit and how many people comment on it, and you've seen a massive drop-off in the War Thunder forums uh, because of the people, uh, or uh, when it comes to people posting on it, sorry. And this is obviously down to external factors, but this is also one of the things as well. I've talked to a ton of people over the last, um, you know, few weeks slash months, and they're just sick of people complaining. 
and they just don't want to read it. They just want to play the game and kind of enjoy it. And I don't blame them, you know, because that's unfortunately like the state of things. There's just a very large contingent right now which just likes to complain about anything. And the fact that there were so many positive things that has happened over these three or four months when it comes to the game. And then you see so many people just, just sad still and just so, you know, just annoyed about the fact that, oh, it, well, it's not good enough. And it's like, well, fine, whatever. But at the same time, like the, the changes that they've made over the last few months are historic when it comes to War Thunder. Like I couldn't even imagine them doing it like in, you know, two, three, four, five years ago. Like, it's just nuts, and there's still so much complaining. If anything, it's just getting more egregious, because now it's being focused on minor areas. And as I said, the Gaijin responses to things, as we went over yesterday when it came to the, or the day before, when it came to the, the ground, or the, sorry, the research tech tree stuff, and then also the, the R73 stuff with the MiG-29, these responses are just, are just flaming fires. Like, they're not actually helping... They're making stuff worse because you're leaving gaping holes <laughs> in different areas that people can exploit. And that's just going to make it worse over time. And I'm hoping that uh, this is kind of a learned from thing. Sometimes it's good just to not say stuff. Sometimes it's good just to let people like kind of go and just let them uh, kind of say their piece and then just let people kind of think between themselves instead of trying to give definitive answers when the thing that you're trying to give a definitive answer about cannot be definitive because it's based on personal opinion. The other thing is there's just a complete lack of mid-tier aircraft. There's no propeller aircraft in this update apart from some updated cockpits for the Spitfires, which I know they count as new vehicles, but, well, they're just not, as, <laughs> as we all have, you know, discussed. There's been no mid-tier propellers, there's been no mid-tier aircraft, there's been no low-tier stuff, really. And if you actually also have a look at the list of vehicles that were on the dev server, the vast majority, and I mean the vast majority of them, were high tier to top tier. Like, there was only a few, like the PT-808, which, I mean, technically even in the coastal tech tree is pretty high, uh, but it's not, you know, as high in BR as many others. But there really was a lot of vehicles just at the higher echelons. And I know this has been happening for a while, uh, but there was a few updates there where we kind of got some different interesting mid-tier vehicles that they kind of added in, and it was really nice. You know, stuff like the B-26, the Churchill NA-75, the VK uh, prototype, um, uh, prototype Panther, you know, all of these things. There was, like, little crumbs of mid-tier vehicles, which was super fun to play. I suppose we have, like, the PVKV-4, but that's really about it. Um, when you think about, like, mid-tier stuff... And that kind of sucks. Uh, there, there's just all high-tier aircraft. There, there's hardly any uh, if uh, which are going to be below, like even 11.0 or 10.0. And that just that just sucks. Like the I really enjoy playing the mid-tier aircraft. I really enjoy playing the mid-tier props, and I also really enjoy playing a lot of the mid-tier tanks as well, and grinding them out and just kind of getting a feel for them. And I understand with the economy changes, it's going to be easier now for most people to play the higher tier stuff, which is fantastic, you know, that's really good. But I just hope that we go back to having at least like one or two or three gems per update, which are from the mid-tiers, just to kind of like flesh it out and just have a bit of fun. I suppose you do have the Hungarian tech tree for ground, so there's a few mid-tier things in there which are quite nice, but that's really about it, and it would be nice if there was just a few more, um, just to kind of uh, spread out across the tech trees. Because I really don't buy into this idea that the vast majority of the population of War Thunder plays top tier stuff. I know that was like a narrative um, going around a few years ago, but also at the same time, like Gajin put out in their social media, they used to do these like little posts where it's like, what was the most popular tank of this weekend? And it was always stuff like the KV-1, or it was stuff like the T-34, which makes the most sense, you know, um, at, the, at the end of the day, but for some reason, like that was always kind of dismissed. Hopefully we see more mid-tier aircraft, hopefully we see more mid-tier destroyers and things like that for naval, so we can have a decent amount of time. As always though, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. 
I'd just like to thank Brendan Quinn, Vilnaeus, Carrot of Fuel, Juan the Panda, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, Bereen, Peter Grayling, Alan Hacker, Sam Alslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R., and also Lafouche for supporting the channel.